The concept of orphanages has long been considered outdated in developed countries, and yet these institutions still house hundreds of thousands of children in the developing world. And surprisingly, most of these children are actually not orphans. Special correspondent Fred de Sam Lazaro reports from Cambodia as part of his series, Agents for Change. Six-year-old Makara Reith spent three months in an orphanage in Batambang, Cambodia, but on this day, his mother's fingerprint made it official. He was going home. There, a counselor waited in welcome with toys for Makara and his siblings. I'm happy that I can see my mom and my sister and my brother. Makara was one of thousands of Cambodian children who live in facilities commonly called orphanages here. Like him, the vast majority are not orphans. Neither parents nor the facilities are looking to offer the children for adoption. Parents, many in dire poverty, are easily convinced to place their children in so-called residential care facilities, says Jetta Pon, co-founder of a non-profit called the Cambodian Children's Trust. Most of them think that in an orphanage, the child will have a better life with access to food, education, and medical care. Now, Makara and his mother, Minya Norn, are part of an effort by several aid agencies working with Cambodia's government to return children to their families. I feel like I have my child closer to me. Now I feel happy. Happy that she now has all three children together, but this was a day of mixed emotions. Guilt for sending her son away, worry about the future. She's single and has no formal education. My life has been very difficult. We just survived day to day. Under the new campaign, she'll have help. For at least two years, Cambodia Children's Trust provides a safety net for the families it serves. If they have domestic violence, mental health issues, or any children who are not going to school, we will work with the social worker. We also provide support in terms of food. The challenges for this family and for the broader campaign are daunting. It begins with the image Cambodia cannot seem to shake of the Khmer Rouge genocide, its two million victims, displayed in museums, immortalized by Hollywood. Cambodia 2019 has nothing to do with Cambodia 1979. Sebastian Maro founded a vocational training charity 25 years ago that's helped thousands of marginalized children and their parents. The movie Killing Fields and all the movies that come out about Cambodia is about this. So when people think Cambodia, they think that all the children are being victims of, of destruction and everyone is orphan which is far from the truth. With the civil strife over, he says, there are far fewer orphans now. Many children still live in poverty, but their number has also dropped amid robust economic growth, notably in tourism to Cambodia's world-famous temples. There may be fewer orphans, but orphanages have also become a growth industry. There were about 150 in 2005. Today, there are more than 400 housing more than 16,000 children. Often they are put on display, dancing for tourists who are then coaxed to leave a donation. We learned to dance. We performed for foreign visitors. It's not fun. It's so exhausting. 14-year-old Dara and his sister Dari, who's nine, were recently reunited with their mother after six years in an orphanage where they recalled lives of physical abuse and insufficient food. It's bad. It wasn't fun. There's profit, Maro says, in pity. It's an easy sell. A uh, child in a terrible situation, fly on the eye, give me uh, $5 a month. If it were that easy, it would be fantastic, but it's not. Then there's volunteerism, a thriving industry in which college or gap year students pay agencies to place them in orphanages. Each year, tens of thousands of young Australians, Europeans, and North Americans come to Cambodia to volunteer. They'll spend a few days, sometimes weeks, in orphanages, mostly teaching English to the children. Child development experts say not only does this not help the children, it actually harms them. It comes from a very good feeling that I'm helping, 
but realistically, would you like to have your teacher change every week? Children thrive on nurturing long-term relationships with adults, the kind usually found only in a family. The development of a child, especially a young child, is hindered dramatically by being in an orphanage, by the lack of personal attention, by, the, by not being in a family. This is where the younger girls... But to Ted Ulbrich, it and, depends uh, on the family and the orphanage. <laughs> Ulbrich is an American evangelical pastor who, with his wife Sue, founded Foursquare Children of Promise, the largest of several faith-based operators of residential care facilities, or as he calls them, church homes. <laughs> Some older religion-based groups have joined the campaign to deinstitutionalize children, but others, like Foursquare, have resisted. The Ulbrichs say they opened their first church home in the early 90s because there was a pressing need. We didn't come here intending to take care of orphans. We came here to, to build a church, and we wound up having these kids dumped on our doorstep. And that need has only grown, he says, to 106 homes, driven by family dysfunction that's widespread and social mores. Our biggest uh, source of children is children that, that m had mothers who died in childbirth. Now those children are considered cursed. Widows are also marginalized in Cambodia, he adds, and they are brought in to staff their facilities. Each has about 25 children. These widows, they, they live with the kids and they're there with the kids their entire life that they're growing up in the orphan homes. Many then profess their Christianity. Not a requirement, he says, but a good outcome. I'm a proselytizer. We Unapologetically. Unapologetic proselytizer. Sebastian Marot says Ulbrich is exaggerating Cambodia's social ills and says his mission would be intolerable if the tables were turned. I'm sure they would be very upset if a Muslim organization opened centers in the U.S. or in France, started taking children from communities, put them there to turn them into nice little Muslims. And this is what they're doing here. It's a Buddhist country. He says orphanages are an outdated concept, closed long ago in France and the U.S. in favor of placing children in foster families and adoption. That's the goal in Cambodia, but it's not easy given the poverty that keeps life fragile for many families and limited resources for family reintegration, which ironically is the cheaper option. It's about 10 to 15 times cheaper to support a child living with their family rather than to bring them into an institution. The Ulbrichts say their institutions are family and they have no plans to scale them back. The Cambodian government's goal is to reduce the number of children in orphanages by a third by next year. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Fred DeSam Lazaro in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Fred's important reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota.